All right, now the latest on uh, T-Mobile and Sprint, whether the two will ever get together. Enter the Justice Department, that maybe sort of as a gate crasher here. Charlie Gasparino has more with breaking news. Another, another messy uh, situation yeah. here. Um, okay, earlier today there were reports that uh, the Justice Department staff, the staff of the DOJ antitrust, has decided that they're going to oppose the deal. They've recommended a lawsuit to block it. Here's what we know as of now. That doesn't mean it's not going to change later in the day. But as of now, from we understand, that's the staff, the policy guys. The Mockham Delarums of the world, the, the, the head of the antitrust division, his immediate staff that makes the decision on whether to go forward and try to block this deal, they have not decided against the deal. And here's one other thing that's interesting, that White House economic advisors, from we understand, believe that means the policy guys, the, the Cudlows, the Mnuchins, right. those types, the White House itself believes that there is really no antitrust concern here on this deal, merging these two companies, bringing, even though you're going from four wireless carriers to three, because it'll be Verizon, uh, AT&T, and the combined Sprint Mobile, the uh, uh, policy advisors, who, by the way, have a, have a line in with Mr. D with, with Malcolm Delarum and his, and his staff, they are, f they are on board on this. They think that the, this combined company is going to be able to ex be stronger and compete on wireless pricing better than if there were two weaker companies. And they're sold on it. And I just want to make real clear here to everybody, and as you're following the story, because Sprint took a hit today, I believe it was on a Reuters report, which is basically a regurgitation of what we know. The staff hates this deal. These are, the staff is essentially part of the deep state. Now, I mean, does the staff, is the, it, did it unanimously rule this way? Uh, the staff makes a recommendation. So uh, they go to the, the, here's our case for not we think making you should, this case. We think you should kill this deal because we think going from four to three uh, is a problem. Are they problematic. often overruled? They are often overruled. They are, they are sometimes overruled. Sometimes right. you don't hear about it. Now you're hearing about it because it's, I mean, you know, it's, it's a little fishy that you're hearing about it now. They may be worried that Delarim is going to follow the advice of the White House and uh, essentially approve the deal and not, not challenge it in court. But, you know, listen, it's never over to it's over. I can only give you what I know. And I know this. The staff hates it. They want to kill it. Mockham, Even in light of Huawei, all these other headlines. They're described as the deep state. There's a lot of Obama administration people in there that believe in a very strict interpretation of, of the Clayton Act, which is the ruling right. act uh, on antitrust. They think if you limit the number of, of providers, that in of itself is going to create an anti-competitive uh, environment. The staff's against it. Delarim is, un is undecided right now, okay? He, is, he and his staff, from what I understand, as of a half hour ago, it could change in a half hour, have not made up their mind. And I could tell you that the White House itself, from the economic and national security stand standpoint, not just economic, national security. Who appointed Delarm to his job? President Trump. <laughs> I mean, it, I, I'm telling you that the, the, if, if he goes against this deal, let's just say he, he agrees with the staff, he will be opposing Donald Trump, every economic advisor in the White House, every Republican who believes in, you know, who believes that this is part of the free market, you know. Right. Uh, his, 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 his buddy at the FCC, Ajit Pai, who just approved it based on conditions. It seems like, listen, I'm not saying he's going to approve it. I'm not saying he's, he's not going to listen to his staff, but it seems like it's... Uh, but it's taking the wind out of the sails and the stocks, right? Just that this might... Well, happen. we should put an intraday up. Um, I think it's off a little bit its lows based on what I just reported. But, yes, you're right. It took a huge – it took a lot out of it. Yeah, it's just a little bit off its lows. Right. Uh, but, yeah, uh, on these reports about the staff. But I'm, I'm telling you, there is a feeling inside the Trump White House that we need one company here that strong – to compete against the other two, and of, of course, you were just talking about. You might be down to three, regardless. Sprint might go out of business. Right. I mean, that's another thing. But right. I, I just want to make it clear here. Um, one of the things the White House is worried about is 5G. Deirdre just said it on Qualcomm. They worry about it here. This is a company that's going to is going to be on the forefront of 5G. And if you're you know worried about the Chinese, you need a listen. Sprint is not going to make it on the 5G, you know, in the 5G competition by itself. T-Mobile is going to have a harder, you know, a better company, but they're going to have a harder time. Uh, Sprint has Spectrum that five that 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 um, that, that uh, excuse me. Uh, Sprint has Spectrum that T-Mobile could utilize in a combined company. 
This makes sense on a lot of, uh, for also, a lot of other mergers in the industry have been approved, albeit with counters and all of that. So yeah, they may and, and this may and they may just get more concessions out of this, Neil. But I, I, I'm telling you that this I'm not saying they're going to approve it. I don't know what's in Malcolm Delarum's mind. You right. know, I'm just telling you, I'm just giving you what I know now. He has not made up his mind. It is his decision. He may make up his mind in a half hour or in a day, but it is his decision. The staff may be against it. But it's his decision. And by the way, the White House wants this deal done. Yeah. You mentioned the White House. Just want to get your thoughts on a Quinnipiac poll that's out. 71% of Americans think the economy is doing pretty well right now. Right. Um, but they're not giving the president the credit. You know, he's never gotten the, 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 the credit. Um, I, I will just say this. I, I think what it's going to come down to, I mean, you saw it during the last election. It's going to come down to when he has his, when it's, it's whether it's Biden or Kamala Harris or whoever, two of them. You know, the, the American people are going to make up a mind. Is is it worth getting rid of Donald Trump for this? Um, you know, and if it's Bernie Sanders, is it worth getting rid of Donald Trump for some guy that's going to take the country radically to the left when the economy is going at 3 percent? And, you know, the American people... You don't think we're there yet. I mean, even though this comes in the face of, you know, like a very strong economy for which the president right. normally would get credit, just as we disproportionately blame him for when things are bad... He is not really, I even in some of these battleground states that he won, he's not trailing. And, and he is trailing. Some of them are doing extremely well there. I mean, when you talk about record low unemployment in Pennsylvania. But he's trailing in there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that um, just doesn't make sense. Yeah, I know. But it's going to come down to a personality contest. And yes. one other thing, Neil, uh, I mean, you know, listen, is, is there any, listen, people who watch Fox love Donald Trump. Trust me, I, it's my family in Queens, you know, and I get it. Uh, not everybody loves him. Matter of fact, most people don't like him. Uh, they don't like his antics. That doesn't mean they won't vote for him compared to the alternative. And he suffers from that dislike because of the Twitter stuff and some of his harsh commentary right. and some of his antics. He suffers from it. That doesn't mean he's not doing a decent job on the economy. And sometimes you just you just vote the economy. You know what I'm saying? Particularly when it comes down to is it Bernie Sanders? I will tell you this. I'm plugged in with a lot of people in the Biden camp in the Biden campaign. They think if any of these other guys get in there and it's not him, it's over. They think they think they, he's the only one that can win. They think he can win easy given his appeal to the Midwest. That's them talking, not me. Understood. Understood. Still early. Charlie Gasparino, yep. thank you very, very okay. much, sir.